Hello, I've made this video to show off the Australator as well as show you how to use it. It's a free keyboard and sampler that I built using Unity. It's a tiny install, easy to use and needs neither an amazing computer nor any other software to get you on the go making cool sounds. There's even an Android version, also downloadable from my site. I've done a video before, but I'm still adding functionality and the Australator has now changed so much that it needs a new video. I built this toy or tool out of frustration with the keyboards that I had and the fact that building a new one would be cheaper for me than another purchase. I'd already built a theremin, so a lot of the groundwork was done. I'm a huge fan of bands like Depeche Mode, Throbbing Gristle and Aphex Twin, which haven't used samples and synthesizers. Anyway, that's enough of the whys onto the tour. Let's start with the obvious. The keyboard is a simple piano style keyboard. If you have a touch screen, this keyboard along with all other features of the Australator can be used with that. If not, the mouse will do. And for fast stuff, you can use the letters and numbers on your actual PC keyboard. This piano keyboard also has other functions, we'll discuss these later. First let's have a look at the control sliders. There are an array of sliders at the top that control the volume and some effects. The white slider to the extreme left controls the volume. Use your mouse or finger to slide it up or down, the sleeping or rubbing motion. The next slider with red lighting controls distortion. Put simply, it makes a rougher noise, which can be good. Note that this changes the volume, which can make getting things right a bit fiddly. Next, and in orange, we have the chorus, which splits the noise by playing it back simultaneously at different pitches. It's much subtler, but again, when it helps, it does. The next two sliders work in tandem to control a noise gate. The first slider controlling the range of frequencies that are let through. The second slider chooses which part of the frequencies are kept, up for high pitches and down for bassier ones. This effect is amazingly robust, allowing you to clean some noises while utterly transforming others. Finally, the last pair of sliders controls delay. The first sets the loudness of each echo as it compared to the original, with the top level giving almost infinite echoes, and the bottom giving a very short-lived and faint echoes. The second sets the frequency, the highest value spacing them out for one second, the lowest squeezing the echoes out very rapidly. Then we have the ambience or reverb dial. This dial gives you access to a whole bunch of reverb presets, ranging from subtle, room-like to wild cavernous. Unlike the others, this is controlled by a turning motion as if it were a knob. And now we're onto the buttons, starting with the purple button. Activating this button gives you what I call drum mode. You simultaneously have access to all of the instruments via the keyboard in drum mode. You can now play all sounds unaltered to create drum sequences or simply play back samples at will, but it is also useful to check and learn what sounds are available to you. Imagine how easy loading up drum samples and tapping out your rhythms on the keyboard would be. Next we have the yellow button. After you activate this button, pressing any keyboard key will change the instrument to a corresponding sample or sound. All of these sounds become play playable as if they were any normal instrument on the keyboard. When selected this way, make sure drum mode is off, by the way. Onto the blue button, which enables you to load tracks. While this blue light is active, you can press any key to replace its instrument with a loaded sample. The first time you do this, the Australator will create an empty folder in your C drive, which is called Australator. This is where all the samples you wish to use have to be stored, I'm afraid. However, you can create and access folders inside here. 
so you can keep things orderly enough. Once loaded, your sample will behave like all the other instruments, accessible as plano-like roll of notes or just as a sample in drum mode. Most WAV files under a minute long can be added, as long as they are somewhere in this Australator folder. All custom samples reset when you shut down the Australator, and you have to load custom stuff again each time you open up. Auto lighting may be a future upgrade, but that's quite hard this end. Harder to use, but also useful, is the red record button. If your computer or phone has a decent microphone, you can record noises in to be used as instruments. Again, these can be accessed and used like any other instrument. I find this great on phones, but variable on computers. Please note that when you create a sample, it is saved into that Australator folder with the name key alongside the number of the key that you chose. If you record a cracker, it's maybe wise to rename this WAV file to prevent overwriting and give you a more memorable name for a later date. Below the red and blue save buttons are the green loop button and the wildly different theremin button. The green loop button literally controls whether the sounds loop when you use the oscillator. This is handy as some noises work really well with looping, but others sound silly or interfere with your tune. The orange button shows and hides the theremin, an alternative to the keyboard. Of note, good looping sounds set to loop mode generally work best on the theremin. The theremin has been tuned to match the keyboard on the x-axis while controlling volume or pressure on the y-axis. It makes great sweeping sounds, very spooky or sci-fi. Because of the theremin being what it is, only one instrument can be played here. Now on to the recorder. Please note that the recorder is not the best way to create and edit sequences, but it may sometimes be useful, particularly with the theremin you just saw. There is a green playback button and a rec red record button. Whilst the red record button is pressed, you will notice that the meter beside it shows a kind of playback head moving across the timeline. If you now play the piano, this will be recorded and play again when the playback reaches the same point again. Note that you can layer music in this mode by playing something simple first time round and then adding on the next pass. Also note the metronome clicks. These can be turned on and off with the yellow button. Push the red button to stop recording. If you now press the green play button, it'll start playing back. And you can play along with your record itself. Also, while you are playing, you can press record and start adding new notes to your recording. Conversely, if you stop the track, then press record before you play, you start from scratch. Also note the cyan stretch button. That will make the timeline longer, double each time, allowing you to record longer tunes. However, this system is fiddly, and unless you're using the theremin, there is a better way. The four buttons on the right of the keyboard open MIDI style tracks that allow you to compose tracks by turning notes on for allotted times. These notes have three states, off, on and continuous. This allows you to choose whether multiple neighbouring notes play out as separate taps or one continuous note. Importantly, you'll notice that no noises are being made right now. Each four of these tracks need activated and deactivated as required using the buttons on the extreme right. This might seem annoying or counterintuitive right now, but it really helps later on. The sliders that appear at the bottom control the timing of each track. On the left hand side we have the number of beats and on the right we have the length of the loop. Getting them synchronized once you've had a fiddle can be tricky, but the freedom you get here is worth the hassle. You can choose any instrument for any of these tracks, just as you can for the keyboard or the theremin. This means that all four tracks can have different instruments applied. 
This also applies to the volume, although the effects are applied to all instruments. Four synchronized tracks with their own instruments, possibly including a drum set, all activated by a button press, along with a keyboard and theremin, and you're beginning to approach the ability to produce tunes right here, in one place. So there we have it, a fairly powerful synth, touchscreen friendly and free. If you've made it thus far, you're mad not to give it a go. Make weird noises and atmospheric tunes easily. And why not share some links below if you bang out a masterpiece? I've linked to one of my dubious creations in the description, along with links to the downloads. Thank you.